Hello and welcome back to another video series. In this series, we'll be looking at DBT, which stands for Data Build Tool. And DBT is an open source project for handling the transformation piece of an ETL or more specifically an ELT type of process. It's really interesting. It really blends software engineering and the automation aspects of that with something that most data engineers and BI professionals are familiar with, which is SQL. And I want to give a huge shout out to the people at Fishtown Analytics who have created this. Um, it's, it's really something that the more you get into it, the more you realize how, uh, how much thought really has gone into the development of this. So, uh, so the first video here will be strictly on just installing DBT and just getting all the foundation set up on your machine. So we will be using the CLI. So I'll go over here to DBT CLI installation. I am using a Windows machine. And there is a note here that says you should have Git as well as Python before you install this. So as it says here, we will open our PowerShell and just simply do a pip install dbt. It's as simple as that. So I will open it up. So I will open our command prompt, pip install dbt. Now that went really fast for me. This is because I've done this in the past before. I already have it. If you don't, it might take a couple minutes to go through and uh, install all of the dependencies that are part of this project. But even still, once that completes, that's it. It's installed. And we can check it by running a dbt version. And there it is. It says this is the installed version. We're up to date. We have these various plugins. And we're ready to go. So the next step here is to create our first project. You know, We have the dbt installed, but we don't have any files or anything to really work with. So what's the next step? There's two ways to go about this. We could either one, create our GitHub repo first that we're going to be building with, or two, start to create the files and then push them to a repository. For this tutorial, we will start first with creating a GitHub uh, repo and then moving from there. So let's go to GitHub, create a new repository. I'll call this demo dbt. Just keep, no description, keep it private. Just a basic repo because this is where we will push everything once it's uh, initiated. So now we have our blank repository here. And now I'm going to clone this into just my documents folder. So documents, git clone. Okay, yes, I understand it's empty. And here we go. So now we have a blank repository. Let's go into that. Let's change directory into that. And right now there's there's nothing in here. It's just an empty um, empty folder. But what we'll do now is we will use this to initialize a DBT project. And the command for that is DBT init and the name of the project. It could be whatever you want. In this case, we'll keep it the name. We'll keep the name the same as our folder. So we'll just say dbt, or oops, we'll just say demo dbt. Enter. And that's it. It's really as simple as that. So now this has created a skeleton project for us. Put a couple examples in here. It also created a user profile. If you go to your users and the name that you're on, I'm on, on my admin on my machine. And we have this .dbt file, folder I should say, with profiles. So let's go into Visual Studio and open up and see what this looks like. So if we look in here, We have our analysis. These are a couple empty folders that can be used for various purposes. Maybe you have some one-off scripts. Macros. Macros are really important aspects of, um, of dbt. You can think of them almost like user-defined functions that can be reused in different places. So we will touch on that later. 
models. This is where the core foundation of DBT lives in terms of creating data models. These are just examples that are put here. We will get into the specifics of each of these uh, files later. Snapshots is another empty one, as well as tests. So really it's just skeleton, there's not much in here. The DBT project is an important one. This is where we can give it a name of our project. Let's call this, keep everything the same here, demo DBT. You can call it whatever you want. But what you put here needs to match down here. That's Again, we'll, we'll get into the specifics, but just understand if you change this, this needs to match. Now the profile here, this is what will match this profile right here. So let's open this up as well with Visual Studio Code. And the default here, I want to do side by side. The default here is matching this default here. The placeholder that was put in is Redshift, and it's split it up by dev and production, which is really nice because you can split up uh, the credentials based on you know your environment, so, and you can easily flip back and forth between what it's looking at by changing the target. So in this case, it's saying use these credentials. If you change this to prod, it would look at these credentials. I actually have to set this up to match. Uh, the profile for a snowflake. So let's go here, and maybe you have something else, but I will go to profiles, go to the profile setup here, find snowflake, and here's an example. This is what it should look like, what it should look like for me. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. My snowflake db, I'll just shorten this to snowflake, which has to match right here. That used to be default, now it's changed. Target is dev, this is the only option that we have right now. I could call this, um, you know, I could call this anything, but we'll just keep it dev. Type is snowflake. The account ID is this part of the URL, everything from the account number to the location. Again, this is specific to my Snowflake instance. Username. This is my username and I'll put in the password that I have for my trial account. After I publish this, I will be removing this. The role. The default role, I'm going to put it as, I'm actually going to set this to account admin. Now this is something in a production environment you likely wouldn't do. You'd want to create a specific role that is just for DBT to use that has all of the permissions that it would need to create and view any table and um, any table and view. But for now, we'll just use account admin just for the sake of simplicity here. database name we'll use this demo DB that comes with the snowflake account warehouse name compute warehouse again these are defaults and all these things you could customize and we can customize as we get further along into something that's a little more realistic schema we can do public Threads, one or more, we'll put this at 10. You can play around with that, but 10 just to allow it, if you have a lot of tests or a lot of models, it can run them in parallel together, which is uh, which can really help performance. Okay, so now this is set. We have our base project created. We have our profile set. It is referencing the correct profile. And this profile is set up to match our credentials on Snowflake. Okay, so let's open up a terminal and one of the commands that we can run here is dbt, dbt debug and that will attempt to connect with the credentials we have and will really let us know if we did this correctly or not.
Okay, uh, what, what do we got here? Error, not found. Ah, that's because I'm running it in, I'm running it in the wrong place here. So let's, let's open up here and do the same thing. Okay, there we go. Again, that was because the terminal was trying to run at the wrong granularity of this folder. So once you run it at the, this level, you should be fine. Okay, so connection is okay. It can find that profiles file, the dbt project file, all of our connection information. So we're good to go. So let's attempt to do a run now. Run our first uh, example, dbt run. Okay, so it says where target is dev, we know it's running here. And it'll give you a log output of everything that's happening. So it created this model, created this model successfully. We didn't dig too much into what these are. Basically, they're sample models that are just selecting one and just creating one row. Now, if we go into our actual database here, here they are. DBT has created these models in here. And... They should just have one row with one ID. That's it. So it was successful. We were able to successfully initialize a project, create a profile, and run our first set of models. Now you can imagine, once you start to really grow this out, now you can literally build your whole warehouse using this tool. It's really powerful once you start to get into it. So now the next step here, the final step, is let's add this to our GitHub repository. Right now it's just empty. Let's see. Can... I think we need to add a remote branch. So let's do uh, git remote add origin Oh, I may already have this. Okay. All right, let's. Okay, so I must have created this already. But if you don't, you can add that origin in there. We will git add everything. Git commit. Add a message. My first commit. And now let's push. Okay, this should have pushed right to, right to master. And let's refresh this. And here we go. Maybe you don't want this extra file, this extra folder structure here. I actually want to change that. I don't, I'm actually not crazy about how that looks. So I'm going to do something a little funky here. Let's, let's do it through here. It'll be a little easier to see. Yeah, we got too many levels. So I'm going to. I'm actually going to put these in here and then get rid of get rid of this folder. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code. It should recognize yeah, we're we're changing all of this up here a little bit. Get add all these changes. Commit message. Remove extra folder. Get push. Now that whole last part maybe not necessary if you're not super comfortable with Git, but for me I don't I don't want to have that extra folder there. And now yeah, refresh this and when we come right to this repo, it's right on here. So we don't have that extra layer of a folder. So now this GitHub is ready to go. And if you have a team that you're working with, you can all start to make branches off of this and push up changes. Thank you for watching. We'll continue on this tutorial in future videos. And if you found this useful, drop a comment if you have any questions or feel free to subscribe as well. Thanks again.